You're watching Telecom TV from the SDN NFV World Congress in The Hague. And I'm joined now by Dave Dougal, who is founder and CEO of Enterprise Web. Dave, very nice to meet you. Why did you found the company? What was the problem in the industry that you set out to address? That's a, a great question for an entrepreneur. I, I think you're always motivated by a problem statement, really. is like So I had been in, this is like the fifth iteration of my business career, right? And I've always grown, started, turned around companies. And one thing I noticed working in the software industry was that software is increasingly becoming the rate limiter for agility. So the, soft, uh, the software that we uh, turned to for automation was actually when we went to the cloud and we were looking for more dynamic, data-driven, personalized user experiences, the old legacy software seemed to be holding people back. And that was the fundamental problem I wanted to address. And I, I started going to Gartner conferences and starting to talk to analysts, and, and I was hearing what was being pitched, but I knew there was something fundamentally flawed. I knew that people weren't really thinking about what it meant to, be distri to do distributed computing and to manage distributed applications at scale. And those were the problems we wanted to solve. So enterprise web comes from the notion of enterprise, scale, enterprise class, web scale. So we wanted to turn, we were thinking about the digital business in essence back in 2009, right? We were thinking about like, how do we take these businesses that have all sorts of software, all sorts of vendor ecosystems, all sorts of technologies they need to connect, how do we make that fundamentally easier for them to do and change and evolve so they can be agile businesses? Now NFE is just five years old or five years young. I'm not saying anything's wrong with NFE, but what would you say are the limitations? If we, with the benefit of hindsight, could go back five years and do anything differently, what might that be? So I think, you know, we're so used to internet speed now, so five years young, I think, is a good way to put it. And, you know, it is the telecom industry after all, you know, 50% of all ICT spending is happening with the people in this, in this uh, convention here at Layer 1, 2, 3. So it's an impressive uh, industry to transform. Uh, if I were to look back in time, right, um, I, I, now we, we've sort of been consistent in promoting this notion that if you really want to think about uh, distributed computing and, and network virtualization and actually exposing network services to your customers or for, for self-service, self-help, where customers can be uh, looking down on the network, looking at catalogs of network services, uh, putting orders for those network services and configuring them, what you really needed was to solve the problems at the application layer. Right? You really needed a high level abstraction that would hide the implementation details from you and allow you to work in a, in a very dynamic, agile, sort of point and click kind of way. But to do that, you really have to solve some big problems about distributed computing. Now, we've been promoting that for a long time in the industry, and I think if you talk to some people, you'll, you'll hear the, that get, that'll get validated. I think the, the trend, or the, the conventional way that standards bodies moves, move, is through interfaces up. Right? They start with interfaces, they start with things they're familiar with, and it's very natural. This is not a, a challenge to that. But the problem is when you start with interfaces up, you tend to build silos, right? And you might not get to your destination. You might not achieve your objective because you built it from incrementalizing up on small things to get to some, somewhere else. And what we, would have, what, what we really promote in Enterprise Web is if you want to have zero touch automation, right? If you want to be able to work in a very virtualized way with these virtual network functions and network services, then you need a, a high level software abstraction that lets you look at these things as objects that you essentially can touch, right? That are almost tangible, right? And that you can compose very flexibly and then you can push them down into the network. So generally we've consistently promoted this notion of thinking about the application outlier. Now if you look now at the Etsy NFV diagrams, if you look at uh, ONAP diagrams, if you look at um, Kubernetes uh, architectural landscape diagrams, one thing you'll notice that's missing on all three of them is the application layer. So they have lots of description down below. They've, they've done a good job at describing the detail, but putting all the pieces together has still been hard for them. And that's where Enterprise Web comes to help. So how do we regain this focus? How are you going to go about it? So we've been promoting and we've actually made contributions to the standards body. So we've been active in Etsy. We, we ran Etsy NFV POC number one, Cloud NFV. We've made run six award-winning catalysts inside the team forum and, and made significant contributions. And, and one of those, to, that, to your point, has been called the meta model for virtual function package. Um, and uh, that contribution essentially gives, describes a pattern for working across standards, working across proprietary interfaces from vendors, working across technologies, let's say open source technologies and commercial technologies, from VMware to OpenStack, and, uh, and gives uh, the industry a pattern for connecting these things in a graph that is very flexible, extensible, and adaptable. 
um, and uh, helps them move to this agility, right? It's a step in the right direction. What we want to do is get them thinking about their, about their infrastructure in a way that will give them the agility they want. So this meta model for a virtual function, it's really not a prescriptive standard. It's really more of a pattern that says, well, actually, all the things you know about, let's organize them differently. You're used to organizing them in uh, sort of very tightly coupled hierarchical ways that end up being very brittle and rigid. And what we're suggesting is the whole, the cloud, the web, these ideas are more like graphs. They're about being very flexible. Just like in Facebook, we talk about the friend of a friends. You have your, your social network graph. Like even, that's now intuitive. People know that, right? Just civilians know that, right? But you know, and so in telecom we have to get this notion of these application graphs, right? The, the virtual functions are applications that are part of network services and, the, and they're all like nodes and graphs that combine with policy and orchestration to implement themselves on uh, over uh, virtual infrastructure managers down to OpenStack and VMware and Kubernetes and these other technologies. Is the industry smart enough to do this in a flexible manner itself, or do we need to go back to standards bodies and request new specific standards? I think it's, the answer is uh, both, actually, right? The problem is if, if, if by design, if, if their intention and objective is to be agile, that means you have to anticipate, you have to plan for things you didn't anticipate, right? Which means you have to accommodate diverse virtual functions, right? They want innovation, right? They want marketplaces of virtual functions, right? They want those to be competitive and innovative, right? They want to leverage that innovation then to promote those as new services to their own customers. So that means you have to be able to, you, your models have to be flexible enough and extensible enough to accommodate things that you hadn't planned for, things that are not standard. So, so you struck on a very good point. The point is, yes, you want standards, and of course, if there were standards for everything, we wouldn't be having this conversation. It would just be done. But the reality is things don't stand still. Things change continuously. We want those benefits. So what it really suggests is maybe we shouldn't be building things static and hierarchically anymore. We should be building things in very flexible, extensible, and adaptable graphs so that we can change things, reconfigure them, sing things easily, add to them, improve them as we need to. And that's the core, that's almost the essence of business agility, right? If you build everything rigid, if you build your house rigid, monolithically, right? Then let's not talk about being business agile, right? You know, let's not talk about business agility. But if your goal is that, and that is the stated goal of NFV, right? If we go back to the, we were just talking about the first meeting, right? And the, the white paper, right? And that was the, the, the high level strategic business objective. This is not supposed to be a te techn uh, technological pursuit. This is not an academic pursuit. This is a strategic business pursuit. The industry needs to be agile. How do we get there? We have to think about that application layer. We need to make that more flexible, extensible, and adaptable so that we can actually respond to our customers, respond to market pressure, and change with it. Now this week we've been looking back at the five years of NFE, but let's look forward if we can for the moment. How would you like to see the NFE market evolve? Everything goes through an evolution, right? And I think, uh, I think we're actually at a really good point. We're actually at a point, I think most organizations just reflexively go back to their old practices, right? So let's say something new happens and this is supposed to be about transformation, but their first reaction isn't, okay, transform our, they just don't do that. Organization cultures resist that, right? They do things with the vendors they had, with the methods they had, the tools they had, and the people they had, and that ends up getting you to the same place, right? I think the industry five years on has tried that and then they've gone and done some open source, they've rolled up their sleeves, they've bloodied their nose, They're, they have more wisdom now through experience. I think that's a great time for learning, right? That's a great time, it invites transformation. When we were talking about these ideas four or five years ago, we were early, but that was okay. We were promoting thought leadership. We sort of could see this moment coming, right? We, you know, but now I think what's happened is through experience, now they're open to new ideas. They're like, okay, we still don't have rapid onboarding. We still don't have end-to-end -end automation. We want these things. We want zero touch automation. We want business agility. How do we get there? We have an enterprise web. We have some answers. And we're willing to work with all the other vendors. We're willing to work with open source. So you know, again, it's about being open, extensible, flexible. Those are, the, those are actually values. They're, they're not just technological properties. They're values. And we believe them to be important to the business. Dave, thank you very much indeed. Okay, thank you.